Uh, hello, I want to welcome you to this class in uh, behavioral neuroscience. I'm very pleased that you're going to be uh, taking this class this semester. And uh, this uh, lecture, I'm just going to be giving you know some uh, introductory kinds of comments and uh, talk to you a little bit of, about uh, uh, some of my uh, experience uh, in the field of behavioral neuroscience. And um, it's a, a course that I really enjoy teaching uh, that I've taught in a number of, uh, of different places now. And uh, I uh, truly enjoy um, uh, the topic of uh, behavioral neuroscience. And I hope to convey to you some of the enthusiasm uh, that I have uh, for this uh, uh, material um, as we as we go along. So uh, again, uh, this is a, a lecture that um, uh, try to orient towards uh, giving you a little familiarity with uh, with who I am and um, you know my expectations and your expectations and uh, you know some of the requirements uh, for the course, but that certainly will not substitute for your uh, reading uh, in, in a very thorough manner uh, the syllabus, uh, which you should all have uh, have read by now. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about this. You know, certainly one of the basic requirements for this class is that you have all taken a class in introductory psychology. Um, Clearly, if you've also taken some biology, that might be a little bit helpful uh, to you uh, as well. But uh, that is not um, a requirement for um, uh, taking this class in behavioral neuroscience. Um, but it is a requirement that you have already taken uh, a class in introductory psychology, because some of the things that we're going to be talking about really do require uh, that you have a, a basic understanding of uh, some of the methods uh, that are used uh, in the field of psychology and, and some of the basic uh, findings uh, as well. Um, <clears throat> I've been uh, really very fortunate to have uh, been able to teach uh, this class uh, again here in the United States for uh, quite a lengthy period of time. Uh, I've had many students uh, in this introductory course in behavioral neuroscience through the years, but I've also had the good fortune uh, to teach uh, this very same class uh, in Thailand. Um, and that class uh, has been a face-to-face -face class uh, that I've taught uh, actually for about 12 or 13 years now, um, usually uh, in the summertime. Um, I am uh, there in Bangkok at Chula Longhorn University, and I've been able to do that uh, as a consequence of uh, the Fulbright program, which uh, initially uh, helped me uh, to get my start in uh, bringing this uh, discipline of behavioral neuroscience uh, to uh, other people, uh, to other countries, uh, to other cultures. Uh, you know, I'm teaching this course, obviously, um, uh, at, at this point in time as a, as a distance course, um, which is uh, less than ideal. Uh, but uh, given the times that we're in right now, it's uh, uh, certainly what we need, uh, need to do. So the instruction uh, needs to continue, and there's no reason why uh, a course uh, <laughs> of this nature um, cannot be uh, equally fulfilling uh, for students, um, uh, again, in spite of the conditions that we're in now. Uh, so what you see there, a couple of classes, one my first one back in 2006, and then uh, more recently, uh, last summer 2019, uh, that's uh, my class that you see there. And um, again, it's been very fulfilling to, to bring this uh, discipline to, uh, uh, to those uh, uh, in other countries, um, namely in Thailand. And now I have the opportunity um, uh, in uh, Vietnam uh, as well. Uh, so again, I'm very, uh, very happy to be able uh, to do that. Um, one of the points that I try to make to students is that we're really just going to be scratching the surface uh, in this uh, uh, topic. 
Um, this is a relatively short period of time uh, that we're uh, going to be engaged in the, in the study of this discipline. Uh, you're going to be taking a look at uh, online lectures um, uh, that I've created, uh, also uh, videos that I've curated um, that, uh, uh, that I want you to watch, um, and readings uh, that you're going to be doing. Um, in total, that's probably about 42 hours of your time. Um, what that actually means is that um, we're going to be spending probably less than two days uh, on the topic of behavioral neuroscience. Uh, so that really requires that you spend, you know, some very significant time outside of class uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of your studying. Uh, you know, we will be having, you know, Zoom uh, discussion, what I call discussion and thought um, uh, sessions. Uh, but it's very clear that you need uh, to be very, very well prepared uh, and you need to really keep up with the, with the material uh, in order to uh, make sure that when we do get to those Zoom uh, sessions that you will be able to um, uh, talk uh, about uh, various issues, uh, discuss various thoughts, uh, controversial areas uh, in the field of, of behavioral neuroscience. So that, again, that's part of my uh, expectation for you. Uh, one thing I tell students is that they really need to follow what I call the one to three rule. Uh, and what I mean by that is that for every one hour uh, of our distance class in terms of those archived uh, uh, lectures that you look at, you should be spending an additional three hours uh, outside of class studying. Uh, so that amounts to some, you know, some significant time uh, that you should be spending uh, going over uh, this material in terms of your reading, in terms of the archived um, uh, curated videos uh, that I've uh, uh, provided uh, to you. Um, and it, uh, it, it amounts to a significant amount of time, but uh, in order to, to really do well in this class, that is really something that you need to be prepared uh, to do. Uh, and I also tell students that it's a good idea to get a study buddy um, and, uh, you know, pick another person that's in class and uh, make sure that you have um, uh, contact information for them, um, learn a little bit about them, and uh, that person potentially is going to be helpful to you in terms of discussions um, uh, that we will be having uh, over the course uh, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, coverage of, of this material. So I think getting a study buddy is something that is, that is important uh, for you to do. Um, you know, what do you need for this course? Well, here's some good news for you. Um, you don't need to spend any money at all on books. Uh, and indeed, there's uh, two required books, uh, a PDF version of the 10th edition of Callet that's been made available to you. Uh, so that's the main text for the course and also uh, the seventh edition of a book that I published. Um, uh, which uh, you will also be reading in, in certain sections of the course. So that is something that is uh, provided to you uh, at no charge. Uh, and obviously you need a good, reliable, high-speed internet connection uh, in order to be uh, taking this course and, and, um, and doing well in it. So um, again, please, um, uh, you know, when you go on your learning management uh, system, um, you know, those books uh, will be there uh, and uh, you'll be able uh, to download um, uh, what you need uh, in order to um, uh, read uh, in the field of behavioral neuroscience. Uh, and again, it's, uh, the assumption is that you have a good, reliable, high-speed internet uh, connection that obviously is uh, very important in order to have success in this class. So how about grades? Um, that's something obviously that students are concerned with and um, the way in which I go about grading is we have uh, four exams uh, over the course uh, of this uh, class. Uh, each exam consists of 60 multiple choice uh, true-false questions 
uh, five points per question. Each exam is worth 300 points, and your lowest exam score uh, is dropped. So it's possible to accumulate 900 points in the class. Uh, again, you know, a reading of the syllabus uh, is important here for you to uh, be knowledgeable about uh, how all this is being done. You know, these exams are going to be posted on the learning management system. Uh, and uh, you'll have a 90 minute period of time to complete the exam. Uh, once you start it, you have to continue uh, uh, taking it. You can't start it, then stop, and then restart it. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the mechanics of that will be explained to you a little bit later on. Uh, when I take a look at the distribution um, of, um, of the uh, uh, point totals after having taught this class many, many times uh, in the past, uh, this is generally uh, what it looks like. Um, you know, 810 to 900 points is a A minus to an A, 720 to 809 is a B minus to B plus. Um, 630 to 719 is C minus to C plus, 540 to 629, that's a D minus to D plus, and less than 539 um, is a, a failure uh, in the class. And I should tell you, I've not had that many failures um, in this class, and students tend to be pretty studious and really understand uh, what is expected um, uh, of them. Um, so this is what things have looked like in the past, and that's how we go about determining grades based upon these uh, uh, four exams, which are spaced out relatively equidistant um, uh, uh, in intervals of, uh, of time and of lectures. Um, one thing I encourage students to do uh, is to use their time efficiently and there's a lot of things that can distract uh, from your from your studying and from being um, uh, a serious student and some of the most important distractions are ones that I'm sure that you're familiar with um, these uh, certainly play a role uh, in our our society and our interactions today but it's the overuse of them that really can be counterproductive and there's a lot of wonderful studies uh, that have been done on how uh, the overuse of social media is linked to lower grades, poor health, uh, mental health uh, problems. Um, so I take those issues seriously. And I think that uh, I like to tell students that they're, uh, I'm not encouraging them to eliminate these things uh, from their usage, but it does uh, oftentimes very much detract. Uh, from them being serious students. So again, use your time uh, efficiently. That's that's the message that I'm trying to get across. Uh, I like to talk a little bit about what I perceive my job uh, to be uh, as a uh, professor. Um, I like to say that I'm trying to lead students to the fountain of knowledge. Um, and some of you are going to drink from it, and some of you um, may only drink a little bit. Um, maybe, unfortunately, some uh, are not going to at all. But it's it's really not I pitch and you catch. Uh, it's not the filling of a pail. But rather, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, stimulate thinking. I'm trying to light um, uh, fires uh, in terms of getting people turned on to the field of behavioral neuroscience. So that's really how. I perceive uh, my job uh, is to is to get you uh, obviously to understand some of the basic principles involved in behavioral neuroscience, but to light some fires in terms of encouraging you maybe to go on um, in, in the field of, of behavioral neuroscience. Uh, it's also important, I think, to understand the difference between um, higher education uh, and, um, you know, what goes on in, in most high schools uh, really throughout the world. And, um, you know, I, I'm your professor. I'm really, I'm not your teacher. We use the word teacher for those that are um, uh, involved in instruction um, at the high school uh, level. Uh, teachers in high school are paid and they're evaluated on the basis of preparing you to take tests. Uh, that's, that's not uh, what I do. Um, professors in universities are not paid to make you learn. 
I think that we are being paid to, to light fires uh, and to stimulate thinking and to stimulate critical thinking about uh, various topics uh, in the uh, fields in which we teach. Uh, so the biggest difference between professors and their students, I think for the most part, students see universities as a place to get a credential, uh, a place where once they have that credential, they're uh, perhaps going to be able to, to make some money uh, as a consequence of that. But we really see it differently. Uh, we see it uh, as, a, as a place where, yes, you're getting uh, an, uh, an education, but we want to make your world richer. Uh, and we want you to be able to understand material um, that um, uh, oftentimes uh, I think is uh, instrumental in helping us to solve world problems. Uh, so indeed, that's that's how I perceive um, uh, my job. And I think that, you know, students really see this in a very different way. We come at this uh, whole exchange in a very different way, students seeing it one way and professors seeing it really in a very different way. Um, so uh, understanding this difference, again, the job of a university professor is not to make you learn. Um, that's really um, your job. Um, in our classes, uh, obviously, there's uh, videotape lectures that you're going to be watching and we're going to have discussions you know uh, through zoom by way of uh, uh, thought questions and by way of material that's been covered and additional videos that you that you've looked at but there's there's no test preparation that's not what we do in a college setting um, you need to develop critical listening skills um, as you watch lectures and uh, when you, as you watch those archive videos you need to be critically analyzing what it is that you are reading, what it is that you are absorbing. So that's a very important message, I think, as you uh, go through this class, certainly through any class uh, that you take uh, in, a, in a college uh, uh, or university. So establishing critical listening skills, again, lots of distractions that we have. Um, whether it be cell phones, laptops, um, iPads, uh, these are all things that can be are obviously very helpful, but they can also be huge distractions. Um, and this course, I want to emphasize, is not one that's about passive absorption. It's not like watching television. It's about critically analyzing what it is that uh, you're reading, what it is that you're watching in terms of the, of the videotapes. And that's an ongoing kind of process. Um, when you engage in critical listening, um, uh, you have questions as you're going along uh, and um, you're trying to make sense of the material, trying to add unifying kinds of themes to the material that, that's being discussed. Um, I think that this, um, you know, very uh, short cartoon is one that's very interesting, uh, Peanuts cartoon. Uh, and and uh, Lucy says, so what do you think? And Linus says, well, what difference does it make? You never listen anyway. And Lucy says, I was just making conversation. Uh, and Linus says, when you make conversation, you have to listen too. And Lucy says, you do. You know, being a good critical listener is crucial um, in learning. It, it's crucial in turn. It's not just passive absorption. Uh, critical listening is so important um, to uh, any uh, course that you're going to be taking, and it's certainly very important uh, for this one. So <clears throat> you will do well in this class if you make the choice to be a serious student. So in other words, being prepared, reading the text, going over tape lectures, the, um, the discussion, thought questions, um, thinking about them, the archive videos. Again, doing all this prior to our Zoom sessions, that becomes uh, very, very important. Um, taking good notes about what you're viewing um, online, that also is important. Uh, devoting significant time each day. Uh, again, instead of cramming uh, shortly before a test, um, this uh, process is one that should be um, ongoing uh, instead of leaving everything to the, to the last minute. You need to keep up with the material. Um, talk briefly um, in the series of uh, uh, slides that you see here. Um, 
talk about Albert Einstein and Albert Einstein had a fear um, he had a fear uh, that I'll <clears throat> talk a little bit more about as we go along but this is what things look like today this is what a day at the beach looks like you know people uh, obsessed with their uh, with their phones um, this is what uh, what it looks like at an athletic contest uh, where people are again consumed uh, with their uh, with their phones with their devices uh, uh, this is what uh, having dinner out with your friends looks like uh, again people are uh, obsessed really with the utilization of their technology um, this is uh, what being out on a date looks like you see these two individuals again they are consumed with their phones um, this is uh, what having a conversation with your friend looks like you're going out for dinner and this is what I see a lot is people not really talking with each other but instead um, they're on their phones um, this is uh, what a visit to a museum looks like uh, again what are they doing well they're not really absorbing what's going on in terms of the pictures that are here they are instead spending times time on their phones um, this is what a, a, a ride uh, looks like enjoying the sights and one thing that you should see is that these people are ones that are using their phones um, while they're in the car uh, so again this is something that we're very much absorbed with it albert einstein had a fear he said i fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction the world will have a generation of idiots and i really think that that day is already here we are so consumed now with technology Clearly, uh, in the present case, you know, technology is making all this uh, available in terms of a distance class. Um, but um, uh, what it means is uh, that we have to be very wary and very careful about over-reliance uh, upon it. Uh, and it's these uh, human exchanges um, uh, independent of our technology that uh, are important and certainly those zoom sessions that we'll be having will be able to to have you know some important discussions you know about this material that uh, uh, that we're going to be covering so the single most important thing uh, you can do uh, to be successful in the class you know is read the syllabus uh, you really need to uh, you know take a look at that syllabus understand the requirements for the class understand you know what is expected uh, of you in terms of um, you know the readings that are involved uh, the archive videos uh, my lectures um, the thought questions uh, you really need um, uh, to uh, carefully uh, read that syllabus and, and read it over several times um, so this is a contract um, and I think that you know the expectations are really very clearly spelled out uh, in the syllabus uh, you really know exactly what you need to do in this class in order to do well um, and I'm very confident that uh, that you will do well um, in this class uh, in the way in which uh, it's structured um, and keep in mind there's no such thing as extra credit there's no such thing as do-overs that's not something that we do as a part of um, university um, higher um, education um, so please you know don't think that you can negotiate a grade you know after grades have been recorded uh, that's not something that we do um, in higher education uh, so understand what ITS means uh, what it means is um, in the syllabus uh, and indeed you need to uh, again to, to emphasize you need to read that syllabus and read it very very carefully uh, so uh, in our next lecture uh, we're going to be uh, you know getting into um, uh, you know a number of different topics one of which will be um, you know to to understand why the study of behavioral neuroscience is so important and um, uh, indeed why we consider it uh, to be so essential um, uh, in uh, science uh, today uh, so that's something that we can uh, look forward to uh, in in our next lecture